All right, it's Q&A time, part two, continuing with the Q's, with your Q's and my A's um, to celebrate my 600 subscriber count. Yeah, baby. Um, big time celebrity, that's me. Okay, Bonto Max asks, what is a likely news headline we'll see in 2030? Here's... Here's the what we'll what we'll see at the on the front page of uh, of uh, well I guess maybe it'll be online or maybe 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 print media will still be around in 2030. Here's what we'll see: um, uh, pedophilic globalist psychopaths uh, put against a wall and shot. Uh, golden age dawns. That's the headline we'll see in 2030, if not before, hopefully before. The sooner the better. <clears throat> um, okay, Sortaba asks, can you elaborate on the situation in Victoria, Australia? Has democracy run its course? Is there a, an awakening or perhaps a two-tiered society? Evidence either way. Do you speak much about Tartarian theory? Congrats on 600. Well done. Thank you. Um, I don't think I can elaborate on the situation in Victoria, Australia. I, I recorded a couple of videos about some of the brutality uh, that uh, that was going on there and, and just the insanity, the, the full throttle... Uh, tyranny um you know much of the world is stepping into a dystopic state uh right now but it seems like in that region of the world australia and uh new zealand particularly it seems like they've they've really uh you know cranked it up to 11 down there um it's an awful awful sight to see it's an awful thing to come to contemplate. Uh, there was one time when I thought it might be cool to visit Australia before I die, but now uh, I, don't, I don't care. If, if things go on the way they're going now, you know, fuck Australia. No offense to the decent people living in Australia trying to, uh, trying to fight for their freedoms right now. My prayers are with you. Uh, has democracy run its course? I don't know. I don't know if democracy has much to do with this. These are, these are oligarchs. Um, these are tyrants. Uh, some of them might have been elected, but, you know, who's to, I mean, do we trust elections anymore? I hope not. I hope we don't. Uh, is there an awakening? You know, I'm not sure. I know there are a lot of people there who are really pissed off about what's going on, but then you hear from people, like I recorded a video about, police, you know, beating up old, knocking an old lady down on a, on the pavement and spraying her with pepper spray in the face. And I got some, some Australian uh, saying, it's okay, mate. We're, we're good here. Quit, quit, quit thinking that everything's bad here. Uh, you know, it's just these bunch of, bunch of radicals who are, they're, they're the ones causing all the trouble, but we're fully in favor of all the, of the COVID, uh, uh, tyranny that's going on down here. We are 100% behind it. You know, I don't know how many uh, brainwashed uh, <laughs> descendants of uh, of convicts uh, are down there in, in Australia, and I wouldn't... Uh, I'm obviously not fit to uh, to um, to contemplate that. Two-tiered society... You know that's clearly what they're what they're going for there. It's what the the that awful witchy PM of of uh, New Zealand openly said. Do you speak much about Tartarian theory? No, I've I've never spoken about Tartarian theory. I'm aware of it, but I have never spoken about it. Um, I'm to a, to a degree I'm interested in it. <clears throat> it seems like another one of those things, though. Like you got. Tartarian theory, hollow earth, flat earth, uh, 
and, and so forth and so on. Um, that just came into vogue like in the last five years or so. So uh, it's interesting, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> Bonto Max again asks, did Trump put a live round in Alec Baldwin's gun? I don't, that's a really intriguing uh, question, not, not, the, not the specific literal question that you asked here, uh, because I don't think that happened. But just what exactly did happen um, there, uh, you know, in that incident with Alec Baldwin shooting the, uh, was it the cinematographer uh, shooting her dead? Um, and there was, you know, ample evidence of just, uh, everything being out of control on this set that Alec Baldwin was, uh, you know, the producer of this movie that he was producing this low budget movie and people walking up, people from the crew walking off the set because it wasn't safe. Um, uh, but then you hear things like, uh, uh what's her name? Rose McGowan. Um, who I heard had said that, uh, you know, things like this happen all the time. And she, <clears throat> she's like a, a radical feminist extremist, but she's also, uh, some, somebody who has some, seems to have some integrity and in that she doesn't just say vote for Democrats. You know, she, she calls out people on the left for being, uh, for being awful, um, as well. Uh, and she, she was sort of implying, and I don't, I'm, I don't know, I'm not endorsing this myself. I'm just putting it out there. She was saying, you know, that people in Hollywood, it's, you know, Hollywood is, is such a sick, uh, culture that, uh, you know, people get off on, on murder sometimes. And this might've been that, you know, uh, intentional murder. You know, kind of like what you see in 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 the movie Hostel, uh, you know, where where uh, you know people, are, hapless uh, young people, are recruited uh, to become and they're and they're drugged and then taken to some place where <clears throat> where rich people pay to to kill them. Um, you know, and she was saying this. Yeah, I don't, and, and Hollywood's into their sick little rituals too. So was this some kind of ritual? Um, there, there's a lot, a lot that's weird about this story. Um, uh, I would say, although I'm not a, f a fan of Alec Baldwin, and I'm not uh, standing up for him or simping for him or anything like that, but I do think, from what I could tell of the re his reaction to uh to what happened he he seemed pretty distraught uh by what happened which suggests to me that he didn't intend for it to happen um but it is strange i mean he's he, like he's the guy who he was the the guy who played played trump on snl you know snl such a worthless show now um, you know, it's been on, been on the air for 20 years too long, at least. Uh, so was this the price to pay for, 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 uh, for embodying Trump? I don't know. Did it have something to do with that? One wonders. Um, Maple Bob asks, what is your daily routine for writing? Do you have a pra daily practice you set aside to talk to God? Or otherwise mediate on spiritual matters. Uh, I don't really have a daily routine for writing. If I have time to write, I usually go out somewhere. Um, and uh, I, it's hard for me to just sit inside and, and, and write. I have to be outside uh, somewhere. Usually I've got my earbuds in my ears. I've got my tunes going, drowning out the world. Maybe I'm sitting in a in a in a Mickey D's or maybe I'm in a mall or maybe I'm in a, uh, motel lobby, uh, just someplace that's, that's out, that's out outside, but still, you know, kind of a controlled environment. Um, 
uh, I do have a daily practice set aside to talk to God. Uh, it's not it's not as regular a practice as it should be. You know, I attend Mass on some days besides Sundays, but I, I wouldn't say I have anybody to emulate as far as <clears throat> spirit, spiritual, my spiritual practition, practitioning goes. Um, Justin Fisher asks, are you still in contact with any of the boiler room panelists? No, I haven't heard from any of them uh, in a while. But one thing that I would like to say here, since you asked about boiler room, is... Um, you know, I had I had my sort of uh, uh, my sort of beef going with uh, with Jay Dyer for a while, and uh, and I, I I eventually just put a stop to that. I, I deleted all of my videos where I was <clears throat> where I was criticizing him, or going after him, <clears throat> and I wrote wrote him an email, uh, and uh, you know, saying saying I was laying down laying down my arms and didn't want to continue with the, the, uh, the hostilities. Um, but that, but that was well after, you know, I had made these videos. Um, I think what melted my heart about Jay was when I saw him on, uh, uh, I think it was, I think he, when he was subbing for Infowars, uh, he had Sam Hyde on as a guest and, uh, you know, Sam Hyde is the funny guy. He's, he is a funny guy. And Jay Dyer, you know, is somebody who I think really, you know, he can be a funny guy too. And I think he really aspires to be the funny guy in the room. But in this on this occasion, I saw Jay, you know, just put that aside and be the, and be the host and let Sam be the funny guy. And I, I thought, uh good for Jay. You know, I, I thought, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of a little hard to describe, but maybe I'm not doing it justice, but, uh, you know, when you've got this ego or this feeling of having something to prove, like wanting to be the smartest guy in the room, wanting to be the guy who knows everything or wanting to be the guy who's, who's, who's aggressively funnier than anybody else. And I, and I understand the temptation to want to be those things myself, although I've never been, I've never, I've never, uh, you know, had the kind of personality where I could, uh, where that was even a possibility. So I had to sort of make peace with, uh, I had to become humble <laughs> much earlier, but I think Jay, because he's smart, because he does know a lot and because he is funny, um, but, you know, I think had, has, has or had, I don't know what his state is now, but had, had egoistic uh, issues, let's just say. Um, and that was what kind of what led to our clashing was that, you know, I, I thought he, he was saying things that I didn't think he, he really knew, but he was acting like he knew them. Um, and I was taking him to task for that. So, <clears throat> but anyway, um, so it was unfortunate how things went down with uh, Boiler Room. Some of you might not even know about any of this. Um, and it was unfortunate that the hosts uh, kind of resolved Jay and I having an argument by me, by by kicking me out <laughs> because Jay was the more successful one. And they didn't want to alienate or piss off Jay, so so uh, so they went with Jay and and uh, and they kicked me to the curb. But no hard feelings. Uh, it's long, long in the past. Um, all right, I'm gonna make I'm gonna stop here, and we'll do a part three. Uh, I really hate to divide things up like this. I just don't want things these to get too long. So if you haven't heard your question yet, I will get to it in part three and we'll wrap it up then. Thanks.